how should the Christian interact with the culture? Well, I think with a little bit of laughter, it's not a bad idea. We're going to go ahead and do our first ever meme review, and uh, we're doing it to kick off the year 2024. So today I am joined by, on my far right, Miss Nikki. How's it going? Good. How are you? Doing well. Glad to have Good. you in the chair of theology, although it's going to be more of a snickerology today. Uh, we're we're going to have to be some... here. I've got my appointment with the priest so I can repent. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be fun. And then we've got Daniel. Hi, back again. In the unlikely chair of philosophy. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Philosophy laughter. Philosophy laughter. I, My you know favorite what? dinosaur. I, that's good. That's good. You have you have Mr. Producer laughing. So I think that's good. Uh, Mr. Charlie, how's it going? I'm doing great. In the chair of culture. No, vulture. In the vulture. <laughs> oh, vulture culture. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. And then we've got Mr. Steve in the chair <laughs> of <laughs> politics. How's it going? Yes. Of course, you do know what politics are, right? You got to break Poly it down. Politic. Poly is many, and ticks are bloodsuckers. <laughs> so, yep. Well, that's that's right. Right. so guys, this is the holiday special. Uh -huh. So, I and we are putting this out. That. We are putting this out on the new year. So it'll be a little bit early. Is that why they call it TikTok? TikTok. And um, yep. Yep. So we won't be putting it on uh, on the third like we normally do. So don't expect a Wednesday. We will be putting this on the first. So happy new year to happy you. Happy new year. So, and then I, of course, will be sitting in the economy seat in the lowest seat of all of them. You know, up there is first class by theology. So anyway, uh, today we're going to try something we're new. Pretty. Tell us if you like it. Guys, we're going to have to explain some of these memes for the people on audio because that is still our largest audience. Over 200,000 uh, downloads. Thank you guys for the audio. Yes, Anywhere that you. you can find your podcast catcher. So um, with that said, we're going to start off with some memes and then we're going to work into some uh, of the more interesting stuff. Am I the a-hole? So we're going to start with <laughs> better late than never. <laughs> We're going to start with some memes. So first off, your reaction to this. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. If it was on audio, go ahead. Mr. Producer, uh, in 2500 BC, Genesis 47, we see that slaves were owned by Pharaoh and uh, required to pay uh, up to 20% of the crops as income tax. In 2023 AD... Yes. Uh, 4,000 years later in change, the media U.S. taxpayers expected to pay 24.8% income tax, a 765 FICA, and uh, they're taxed on every other part of their income. Ouch. That progressivism is kind of regressive, Actually, isn't it? Yeah. It's a, it's a progressive tax. But, but buddy, you're going to need to get that... Uh, that uh, symbol. You need to laugh along here. You gotta get the Come on, dude. <laughs> Man, Thank you. We are slow. We need the help. New producer. We oh my gosh. <laughs> Do oh we have a gosh. snort from the audience? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, Come so on, audience. <laughs> our 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 producer over there is Rye Rye, the producer guy. Thank you for producing, sir. <laughs> so he's He's going for it. He's going for it. You're welcome. <laughs> He's got it. Okay. So next meme. So for those of you who don't understand what a meme is, it is a joke, a cultural reference. So for those of you on audio, we have the dog saying, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> and the cat is reacting to the crucifix. <laughs> yeah. You got to unmute some of these, well, Ryan. I always thought cats were demons anyway. <laughs> Amen. Oh, my. my God. So, well, we've just been banned from YouTube. There we go. <laughs> okay. If you have any, any thoughts oh or reactions, gosh. go ahead. But otherwise, Ryan, next one. <laughs> this is from the Babylon Bee. Pope Francis excommunicates Apostle Paul over outdated views on oh, women and marriage. My goodness. <laughs> I don't know. Do y'all think that one's coming? Uh, I mean, they do some well, pretty good ones. So, you know, my, my dad used to always say, you know, it, someone would ask, if, and if it was true, he'd go, is a polar bear white? Is, uh, is, is, is hot hot? Is the cap, uh, Pope, Pope is Catholic? Catholic? Is water wet? <laughs> and, and, and now it's like, well, well we don't know, uh, Steve. One of those kind of. <laughs> my my right. son would post this. <laughs> Babylon right B on Facebook and people didn't understand it was satire and they get really upset with him and he's like it's satire it's just something to laugh at that's all it is <laughs> okay okay so Babylon B has actually been under multiple reviews for oh. being a satire site 
Oh. And, and, and that tells you the, the level of wokeness in America. Boy, you ain't kidding. Well, the fact that it's beyond satire, A. And B, I'm sorry, Christians are kind of stupid. We, we are. We, we, we are. We'll, we'll, we'll read Speak something. Speak for yourself. We'll... No, come on. <laughs> well, how many Christians have yeah. you seen read something like that and go? And it's oh, like, yeah. well, it's like well, 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 hold your beans. Hold your beans. <laughs> There's kind of chill. So many that have absolutely. Absolutely, there, oh, no sense of humor whatsoever. Yeah, they're like so dry. It's like, <gasps> oh my gosh, what did you say? Exactly. What? Oh my gosh. So, it, it, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, Mr. Producer, I think the camera got bumped, but that's okay. It'll be good. It'll be good. Go ahead and go back to the next meme. Hope the next one. Yeah, it was my fault. It was my fault over the break. Absolutely. I take responsibility. Next meme. So, is, you want to read this, Danny? Yes. Yes. Dudes be like, I'm spiritual. I'd be like, demons are spirits too. Be more specific. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, was it James or Peter who said, you do well. The demons believe and tremble. Yeah. Yep. Yep. This Nikki, sure get the next one. If you can read it. Oh gosh, no, 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 Mr. Producer, I know which one this is. So uh, let me see. Let me see. I'm going to see if I can find it because it's kind of fine print. It's hard to read from the monitor over there. You're going to have to read it, and I'm going to have to repeat it because I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing, seeing it. For those of you on a computer monitor, you'll be, you'll be able to. Yeah, read you it might loud. need to get a little closer, but say it, say it again, Mr. Producer. We need to find a new way to get people, young people in church. Smoke. Hazers, lasers. Let's preach the gospel of truth and mercy. And then they throw them out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> typical corporate. Oh, oh my gosh. Typical corporate. Oh, my Next gosh. One. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Steve, can you read this one? Yeah, there's, uh, you, know, you got two no man. Well, sn Sno yeah, 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 let's no be guy. careful. Snow people, snow Good. persons. Don't be absurd. Nobody made us. We evolved by chance from snowflakes. Oh, I believe it. <laughs> yeah. Snowflakes. Actually, actually more likely than the human genome being formed. Just saying. <laughs> next, one. <laughs> next one. So, Mr. Charlie, can you get this one? Oh, I'm not sure, but we're going to try. If the, po the Apostle Paul were live today. Okay, I got it from here. Yep. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, to the churches of the United States of America, grace to you and peace from our Father in heaven, our Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't even know really how to begin to speak to you people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, man. My That's goodness. about right. Oh, man. Yeah. Next one. Does not surprise. <laughs> Miss Nikki. My parents in their 30s. Let's buy a house. Me in my 30s. Another chapter in Revelation is happening today. <laughs> <laughs> With an oh You know, in, in 2008, instead of being in first grade, I should have been working and buying a house. I know, right? You know, and so here's one of the things. And so the, this is something that I think the, the boomer generation really gets wrong. Okay. I think there are a lot of millennials and Gen Zers who do not know how to work. By the way, I've had, I've hired and fired a lot of them. And I happen to know I happen to know a good Gen Zer who actually does work hard uh, over here. Uh, but but and Mr. Producer works hard too. But that aside, it is six times more expensive than the average cost of living to buy a house than it was in 1950 something. I think I forget the exact stat, mm -hmm. but it is six times more by the cost of living. And that's because we spent all of our money on terrible, terrible social programs. But you know, they're coming out do. saying there's going to be a big house correction coming. And that's... Yeah. Save. Time to buy. I don't think so. Yeah. Save. I don't well, think so. Here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. They're going to run the economy down. BlackRock, Vanguard, all those other people are going to be ready to swoop in and buy. And then when they overpurchase... People like Liz Warren are going to bail them out because BlackRock and Vanguard are too big to fail. That's right. They're also yep. pri her primary donors through all yep. the different subsidiaries. <clears throat> Mr. Producer, next one. 
Mr. Steve, and you get. Oh wait, no, no. Just, Why? Because, go ahead, play it. Okay, well, that's interesting. You know why? Why? Because. Okay, well, that's interesting. You know why? Why? Because. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> it's so, just stupid, those, but it's for, so funny. <laughs> for those who can't read the caption, it says, Joseph, when speaking to Potiphar's wife, be like. <laughs> and he just runs off. Okay, Mr. Producer, next one. Okay, go ahead. Go, go ahead. You know, people yeah. disturb them or they destroy them. These eagles haven't been born yet. Like they've rights, you know, everything. Yeah. Like we don't, we don't think that they should be harmed or there should be harsher penalties for those kind of things. Would you yes. guys agree? Huh? Yeah, yeah sure. awesome. Eagles. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Don't kill eagles. Yeah, don't kill eagles. Right? Eagles okay. have rights too. Eagles are people too. Yeah, eagles are people too. I hope. You saved the eagles. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we actually, let me just talk to you real quick. We have one other petition about stopping the killing of humans. Oh my God. Like babies. Wait, so I don't know no, if you would want to. I wanna... don't agree with that. I, I'm pro abortion. Sorry. Oh, fair enough. Oh, no, like, I don't agree. You don't agree? I uh, fully support abortion. A human woman should have more rights, probably, than a bald eagle. Yeah. Okay. Abortion. Uh, rape isn't considered when you're talking of, like, e eagles aren't raped. That's, I think that's true. We have a petition to stop. Okay, the Thank you. I don't know <laughs> it's just about dumb. that if they're not. Huh. Well, you know, so oh. actually it's only dolphins that do that. Only dolphins rape. Do they? Yeah, yeah. Dolphins are the only ones supposedly in the animal kingdom that uh, do sex for pleasure. Uh, everything well, else is instinctual. And I don't know because... Some of the things that I've seen in the woods, yeah, like didn't ducks. look like they were uh, um, friendly, <laughs> giving it up for free. Let me put it that way. Well, I've, I've seen a couple of cats. I've seen a couple of cat. Compose yourself, Danny. I've seen a couple of cats that I didn't think really wanted it. So yeah, I mean, I, I suppose that that's true. Oh man, it didn't look. Like yeah, the, 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 the cross, the power of Christ compels you. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. All right, next one, Mr. Producer. <laughs> yes, you have to. <laughs> I wonder how job. many are going to watch Let's this. Paid to do oh, wait. Oh, <laughs> My gosh. But don't okay. just, like, boss me around. You have to turn it up, know? buddy. Like, lead me. Lead me when I'm in the mood I don't know, to buddy. be led. Oh, my gosh. I want guidance. Oh, I my want gosh. I want leadership. Y'all hearing it? But don't just, like, boss me around, you know? Yeah, don't boss Like, me lead me. Lead me when I'm in the mood to be led. My I want goodness. guidance. For, want for, for, for those of us that but don't just like boss me around. <laughs> for the for those of us that can't read the caption, the caption says, uh, "Modern Christian women." <laughs> <laughs> Next one, Mr. Producer. Okay. Mute, mute. Yeah, it's too loud. Okay. You posted it. All right, fine. Uh, exchange each hostage f uh, for 100 pro Hamas U.S. students. Good for Israel. Good for USA. Good for Hamas. Educational for students. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow. you know, I. I I actually do think that, that would be very enlightening. Yeah, yeah it, it would. would. It would. You, it you would. You might say for some of them, it would be it'd be a, a rapture or or a bit of a release on the top of a building. <laughs> They're wearing <laughs> the rainbow flag. My gosh. I'm just. I don't want that. I'm just saying, if you support Hamas and you are LGBTQAI, you're American and you support Hamas. You they want to kill you. You just have to be an American. That's all. Yeah, yeah. but. The, let me put a little correction on that. The, the thing is, is that you've got groups that are pro Hamas because they want to be anti-American. And that's it. And that's it. That, that's all it is. And that's the issue there with what we were just talking about. Well, any right. of these anti-American groups are pro Hamas. You look at them, all that anti-american groups that are out there they're all pro hamas they're all of them yep next meme next meme okay 
Real identity is the most important thing. Everything should be looked at through the lens of race. Jinx, you owe me a Coke. We both have a lot of opinions about people of color, even though we barely know any. I say colored people, but as long as we're classifying them, we both think minorities are a united group who think the same and act the same. And vote the same. You don't want to lose your black card. Sorry, I don't know. I just think we should roll back discrimination laws so we can hire based on race again. Jinx, now you owe me a Coke. Hey, tell oh, me you told me yesterday. I hate that when white that actors should only do voices for white cartoon characters. I've been saying that for years. Stick to your own. Us white people, we have so much privilege. I agree. It is a privilege to be white. Ask him about interracial dating. All I said is that black men who date white women have internalized racism, and white men that date ethnic women are fetishizing them. Guys against interracial <laughs> dating now. Like, am I being pranked? Did Boomer put you up to this? Ugh, you know that taco place is white owned? White people should be making white foods like Kraft macaroni and cheese, no seasoning, not even salt. <laughs> it's like he's a mind reader. I mean, I've been pushing for segregation forever and my man does what? I created an improv comedy show exclusively for ethnic people. Guy segregates comedy on my birthday. White people need to stop wearing dreadlocks and they need to stop appropriating black people's music. Shaved heads and country music, the way God intended. You know all white people are racist. <laughs> I'm listening. Even if you have a black wife or a black friend group, you're still really racist. You know he just kicked a guy out of the organization for having a black girlfriend, but if you can promise me he's still really racist, we'll consider letting him back in. Black people should only shop at black businesses. I guess the only thing we really disagree about is I... Okay. You, you know, <laughs> I almost thought wait, about... Wait, wait, wait. He, he, Mr. Producer did cut it off too soon. It wasn't done. The only thing we disagree about is that those guys with the little funny hats aren't white. <laughs> I can be made to think that. For those of you on audio, if you haven't seen the long, the Ryan Long comedy, special uh he does a lot of great tours and that was woke and racist and notice the difference go ahead i almost braided my ponytail but i didn't want y'all to think that i was racist i show <laughs> could you please tell me culture. why it's a ponytail and not a donkey tail why well, isn't it? Why I'm, is it? Why are we partial I'm to horses? I'm not <laughs> wanting to be appropriating a democratic culture. <laughs> I, res <laughs> I resemble that remark. Yeah. What does that well, mean, you know, Steve? It's, Would you it's, care to enlighten us? It's, it's not a man bun. There you go. It's not I, a man bun. Good here. Next one. <laughs> Keep it rolling. My goodness. Okay, so this is Bodie Bakker. I love God, white beers. I have friends who beat their wives. <laughs> Okay, so don't hear me today bashing wife beaters just because I'm preaching from the tip. Now, you hear that and you go, huh? That's how every sermon on homosexual, well, not everyone, because I got some on the internet too, but that's how a large percentage of sermons on homosexuality start. With a 15 minute apology and disclaimer for everything that's about to come after. And then you close by reiterating the disclaimer at the beginning. Why? Because the 11th commandment, thou shalt be nice, which when you exegete the culture means thou shalt not be manly. Before I start the sermon, listen to Bodie. me carefully. I love white beers. I have. So let's, let's talk about it real quick. The best. Should Christians, should Christians be concerned with how the culture views them yes that is, yes. That is oh, wait, to wait, some wait, extent wait, to some wait. extent yes let 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 him cook let her cook and then i want to hear you too uh, uh, ask the question one more time should the christian be concerned with how the culture views them okay. it's very specifically worded yeah yeah reason being well there, there are a few reasons you can look at my my main one is are they are they approving of that attitude are they are they approving of that way of living is the culture approving that or is the culture being like hold up it's not what my bible says if you can prove me wrong that's great i don't think you can miss nikki i do care how people view me not that i want i'm i'm not a follower but I want you to view me that, oh, she's going to stand for Christ and she's going to stand on biblical principles. And I'm, I'm going to do it without shame. Amen. So I, want, I don't want you to view me as, oh, she's just one of us. <laughs> okay. Yeah, see, I was, initially I was like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You were triggered. But the way that you really worded it there at the very end, 
we hear so many times it doesn't matter what other people think no it does matter what other people think either they see you as a christ follower or they don't see you as a christ follower which is it let me add one more layer and they don't want to get steve let me add one more layer does it matter if you win them or does it matter if you are win some uh, win some is the issue does that make sense? you don't need to win them that's not your job that's the spirit's it's, job right it's yep. not up to us to win it is up to us to plant it's us to be win some yep and, and there's a difference right so you know ben shapiro said it well really well one way uh I, I, one time he said it well and you could you could hear the arrogance through it, but he said, uh, you know, I mean, like if you want to own the libs, I mean, like first off, we we got a, we got rid of slavery years ago, and second, if you have to own the libs, then you got to feed them, you got to you know whatever. Like, why don't you want to win the libs? And I'm like, mm. actually, well stated. Yeah, yeah, it was well stated. Like, it's actually correct. You want to win people. You don't want to beat people into sub submission. That's right. Now. When you were talking about the culture, now there's an, you know, you have different cultures in this country. Okay. Now you have Christian culture, you have various, let me say, religious cultures. Okay. Now there are those that are going to look upon you with a various lens. There are those that will never, ever going to win towards a Christian culture. Amen. Never. So now. So play it straight. Exactly. Now, they are going to look at you and go, I'm going to chop your head. Mm -hmm. And you will never, ever win them. You will never, ever get them on your side. They will see you as a Christian. It doesn't matter if you're a teeter -tod toddler on Christianity. If you just kind of feel like you're a good person and I feel like I'm a Christian, they're going to chop your head off. Let me, it doesn't matter. Let me push back on you for one thing there. They will never change if you submit to them. You have oh, to hold totally the true. You have to hold the truth. Totally You're true. Correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're saying if I subject myself <clears throat> and my worldview, if I lower my worldview to them, I you cannot win. Exactly. And what I'm saying is, is you know exactly that because I'm not going to worry whether how they feel about my Christianity because I'm a strong Christian and by through my actions is going to prove that and they're going to see that that's what I am. Another Christian who walks comes in to the church and sees what I do every single Sunday, sees me standing there every time they walk in the door, smiling, welcoming them in, shaking their hand, showing them where to sit and welcome them. They go, now that's what that, this is a great place. They got some good people here. I like this place. These people are really good. And I'm showing what I am as a Christian. This guy over here wants to chop my head off. Man, hey, it doesn't matter to him. But I'm still going to be who I am. I'm not going to worry about whether or not he likes me or not. That's the only way that you're ever going to win someone like that. And, mm -hmm. and in fact, uh, that I, I actually, actually do think we need to keep moving because we want to get to some more stuff in just a right. moment. But I know that there's a pastor friend of mine. I've mentioned him before on the podcast, uh, Pastor Paul. One day he was in Liberia. He was, one of the, he was the only white missionary in Liberia at the time. Oh, wow. And uh, these Muslims came out, militant Muslims came out, and they were going to kill everyone who was there under the revival tent, which was a bunch of palm fronds laid together in the 110 degree heat to get a 20 degree difference from the outside. Everyone ran because these Muslims have been slaughtering Christians. He walked up. Everyone said, Pastor Paul, run, run. He goes, no, 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 it's okay. He said, God's telling me to go and talk to the one, the one with the pointy head, he said. So he goes up to the one with the pointy head, and he says, 
that's a fine rifle you have there. And the man goes, ah, oh, you know, he asked him if it was a Yugoslavian or Romanian AK-47 or whatever. You know, a little bit of gun nerd. He goes, ah, oh, I see you know your weapons. What army are you from? You know, he's thinking that he's a, he's a foreign spy. And Pastor Paul goes, I am part of an army. I'm part of the army of the Lord God Almighty. And he sent me here to talk to you. That man became the bishop of that church in Liberia over the years. He's, he's, one of the, he's, no, he's one of the two leaders of that church. He's number two in that church. So over 20 or 40 different churches. Oh. You only change when you stand on the word of God. You only change people when you stand on the word of God and you say, I am willing to stake it all. Is that the machine gun preacher? As the... <laughs> No, I mean, did no, no. y'all see that movie? No, no, no. <laughs> which but, was a real, uh, which was a true. Paul, Pastor Paul's like that. He wasn't that yeah. preacher. But next meme, next meme. That got serious for a second here. We're used to the serious here. Next meme. All right. I'm not burning at all. Chatter, Misha, hey, come go. Who are, who are you? Oh, right, guys. <laughs> I'm Jesus. So, am I supposed to be impressed or something? Oh, right, Old Testament people. Okay, so I'm gonna be a pretty big deal in the future, and then I'm gonna come down again and again in the future. Nobody knows when, probably sometime before GTA 6 drops, but I'm the reason why you guys aren't burning right now. I don't get it, but thanks for saving us. I guess this will make them think twice before we're throwing a Jew in the oven again. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad, oh, that's bad. Wow. Thank you, Daniel, for that meme. Okay, so <laughs> next meme, <laughs> Mr. Producer. <laughs> next meme. All right, here we go. Come to a total of eight dollars and fifty-eight cents. Thank you. Please pull forward to the window. Twenty dollars an hour for California fast food workers. That surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. Order okay. comes to a total of eight dollars and fifty-eight cents. You, you got to be on that mute button. But yes, thank you, sir. So for those of you who are watching or listening and not watching, we've got a news report of the t fight for 20. And then they start to automate all of the McDonald's. Surprise, surprise. Okay. Can I just say, can I just say, by, by the way, by the way, what's his name? Uh, uh, Greg the Stallion or George the Stallion, whatever the guy's name is on TikTok and Instagram. The guy goes... I can't believe that McDonald's, McDonald's is now charging, it's like $20 for two people to go to McDonald's. Like, when do they learn their value? This is the same guy who wants $20 for the employees. Do some math. Please. The, the, <laughs> Please do some math. <laughs> but seriously, you, I'm, I'm sorry. You want to charge $20 for a six an hour for a $6 burger. And they're paying them 10. And then you're going to raise taxes on that company. And you're going to make meat more expensive because of your stupid vegan policies and your stupid COVID policies. What do you think McDonald's is going to do? Cut, they, cut the meat out of their own buns? Like, what, what do you want? Meat. They're going to gonna have that <clears throat> pretend meat. It's gonna be no, made they're going to pull the bug. They're going to pull out. And they're going to charge more. Well, they're 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 going to automate, like you said. They're gonna they're gonna cut back. I mean, we've, we we we've, we've eliminated. Sorry, McDonald's, you did this. Nikki and I don't go to McDonald's anymore. We will not. Find what? reason? No, we won't. Uh, French fries are great, right? Yeah. No. no if I not. can't go in and look somebody in the eye to deal with an issue. And I can't get somebody to help. Nope. Sorry. But, we, we, we just had that experience where we went to the restaurant. We had to order on our app. There's one person behind the counter. Only one person you could see because everybody else was in the back. And she was so slammed. And so we ordered on our app. This is McDonald's. 30 minutes later before we got our food. That's and then no it joke. was wrong. And, and we couldn't go up and say anything to her because we couldn't get to her. Correct. And so that's what happens when you when you socialize or you make the government intervene into a yep. private business. I, I don't they're the same thing. All burgers, it's just dumb. It is dumb. And I, I, I frankly, uh, you'll never find me like defending McDonald's as an uh, guys. McDonald's is McDonald's. I get it. I get it. But also, it is our fault 
that they are now automating and cutting down overhead mm -hmm. because the yep. we raised the taxes, we made stupid decisions, we decreased the value of money, and now fifteen dollars isn't enough to make. Fifteen dollars used to be when y'all were kids. Fifteen dollars an hour was enough to make a living. Not, not <laughs> barely. Fifteen dollars an hour was a man. good living where we lived. <laughs> so man, I remember I was making man. I was making like a dollar thirty-five. So, so John Arthur, yeah. when Nikki and I were growing up in Western New York, the uh, the the minimum wage was three thirty-five an hour. At eighteen years old, I was making three dollars and thirty-five cents per hour. Now I want to take that for just a moment. What's the minimum wage now? Seven twenty-five. Yep. Multiply it by five. You tell me if somebody wouldn't feel like being they're going to be rich compared to that standard of minimum wage. Correct. Even in today's society. Correct. And listen right. to what he, he was making a dollar. I, I remember oh, when I was 16, I made a dollar 35. I remember when it yep. went up to 335, yep. man. And I was like, Ooh, I'm so, going to be rich. So, <laughs> so should, should McDonald's pay more or is there another answer to the problem that millennials and Gen Z faces? Well, first off, McDonald's is not your career. It's a place for you to work, to get through school. It's part-time work. It's If you're looking to, to pause. make a oh, living. Man, she's going to start preaching pause. now. Pause. I'm just, I'm just starting. She just got started. From, <laughs> no, no, from, no, but, but, but start. <laughs> here's the thing. $15 an hour used to be a lot. What changed? What changed? Government printed more money. Used to Thank be. Thank you. Able, yes. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. It's, Every day that the government prints money, you are becoming much, much poorer. Stop raising the wages and stop raising the artificially raising Amen. the wages. Amen. Right. Yeah, you stop. can raise my wages. It's just fine. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. But my goodness. So, hey, you know, I own my own business. Hey, can I get a raise? $15 yeah. an hour, man. At fifteen dollars an hour, at one time, a man could live off of that and raise his family on yes. fifteen dollars an hour, single income. Is it corporate? Yes. I is can't it even raise myself on fifteen dollars an hour. Yes, right you now. can. It, is yes, it, you can. Is it corporate America's fault that that's the case? That fifteen dollars an hour no longer goes that far. No, it's the government's fault. Now, maybe corporate America has participated in that. <laughs> That's possible, and we can we can agree with that. But it's the we got to stop spending the money. And, well, and, 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 and we don't to, have. I will say, Daniel is partially right. Given the prices that we are paying right now for some of the different things that we are, fifteen dollars an hour is tough. I I'm advocating from the position of it requires a change in lifestyle. Yes, but you can do it. You you can work through a lot of hard times. I do get where he's coming from. There's a lot of people that live out of their car. Well, I don't know what the yeah. problem. Is. Well, I, all, all I'm saying what is, is if, if you're dude? paying at least twelve hundred dollars a month on rent, that's the cheapest that, that I could find in this area. There that's correct. Go. That's yep. correct. And you're making fifteen bucks an hour, even if you're working full time. It's, it's going to be really tough. tight. Yep. Correct. I would agree with that. Next meme. I would agree with that. Next meme. I'm going to need you to, to reel it back in just a little bit. <laughs> no. for, those, for, those, for those who can't see it, what does it say, Mr. Buckies. Professor? Mr. Producer? I'm going to need you to, to... What does it say? I have a solution to the Palestinian problem. Put a Bucky's in the middle. Of Israel. <laughs> the only thing that's going to get blown up is the toilets <laughs> with the buckies in the center of Israel. <laughs> and well, in some, gonna... I'm going to tell you what, in some places, there won't be toilets. It'll just be a hole. No, no, no. Yeah. No, yeah. The, the outside, there will still be excrement on the outside of that Bucky's. You know why? Because all this, all those people who were coming from Hamas are going to, you know, still no, they do don't exactly. use toilet. I said on the outside. On the outside. Like I <laughs> said, you get it? they don't use toilet. <laughs> That's not a no. Oh, Trust me. <laughs> That's not a no. That's an I agree with you. I was, I was in Romania and I was looking for the restroom and I asked this guy from Romania, 
can you point me to the restroom? He goes, I don't understand. I said, can you point me to the bathroom? I don't understand. I said, toilet? He goes, that I understand. <laughs> when I was in Next Jordan, meeting. went to a place, all they had was a hole and they had a uh, little painted feet in f on kind of like in the front of the hole where you just kind of like put your feet there and you just kind of oh, like yeah. squat yeah. over it. And when, yep. and when I was at uh, <laughs> when I was at Scout Ranch, we had toilets that were back to back so you could lock arms and scream as you as you next next minute. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh my goodness! True story. This I on now, you. This I on your cow. I'm telling you, this <laughs> is a true story. So, so <laughs> that is no joke. So is what I said. What I said is very true. James and I had a great time. Next, next meeting, please. <laughs> oh no! We have an uncooperative producer. Local, all together, simple. All together better Fort Lauderdale. So, what all is. together. Yeah. Local, when worship leaders be pulling up to the stadium. Yeah. So, nobody, just nobody, worship leaders is the text for this one. Mr. Producer, next one, please. I have to go make a call. Mute. Mute. My guess. So, for, for, for those who are on audio, Moses, when he's coming down and sees the golden calf, I have to go make a call. <laughs> <laughs> Says Moses. Next one. <laughs> oh, okay, is that it? Okay, so it is now time. We don't have a slide for this. It is now time for us to do a uh, something I've always wanted to do with this group but we've never done a meme session. This is, am I the a-hole? Nice. Oh. <laughs> you know, when you speak and when I'm speaking, <laughs> there's an overlap because we're on two systems. It's very bad for the audience. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. It's, Producer. He has it. Okay. Miss Nikki. I want you to read the first one, and we're going to decide. Uh, am I this thing for bringing my sister-in-law's wallet to the restaurant when she conveniently always forgets it? My sister-in-law, Amy, always comes to visit from out of town. I'm 28. She's 26. I'm telling somebody else's story, not mine. She stays with us instead of a hotel. And she always wants to go to an expensive restaurant. She always conveniently forgets her wallet or comes up with some excuse as why she can't pay her share. She has implied that since I make much more money than her, I should be the one to pay. No, not my husband should pay, but me specifically. I do make a fair amount of money, but not so much that I can treat someone every time they come into town. Nonetheless, in the past, I have just paid the bill and asked her to pay me back. She never has. She had, I mean, she had made a reservation at an extremely expensive restaurant last night. And before we left, I made it clear that I would not be paying her bill. This is where I might be the bad <laughs> person. And I'll admit, I got this move straight from an episode of Two and a Half Men. <laughs> As we were leaving... Her and my husband went to the car. I pretended to forget something and went back inside and I found her wallet sitting right on top of her suitcase and I put it in my purse and we went to the restaurant. When we were done eating, I asked for separate bills and she said, oh no, we only need one bill because I forgot my wallet again. I reached into my purse and said, oh, this wallet? <laughs> She was extremely furious. She said that I should not have touched or grabbed her wallet. So, am I the babe for taking her wallet and bringing it to the restaurant? Da, 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 da. Okay. First off, me and my husband will be having a talk about your sister because that's who you're going to deal with. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, actually, actually, I think, I think, uh, I think the, Original poster, the OP for the so 
By the way, th this, this is what people do. They go and post their, their stupidest, worst stories. This one's okay. Yeah. On the internet for everyone to read. There's been worse. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say I think the original poster, the OP, is not the a hole. However, her husband and her sister in law both take the crown for this. Well, I will, I will tell you this, like, too, is that this is, a, this is true. This happened when I grew up. Is my mom and dad, we lived in a small trailer in the country. We weren't very, we didn't have a lot of money. And we had this other family. They always conveniently showed up at supper time. Well, in the country, you fed people. When they come to your house, you offered them something to drink or something to eat. So for about a week, she fed them. And when she fed them the first time, they came back the next night. Well, after about a week of this, my mom said to my dad, I cannot afford to feed two families. So the next night they came, we ate in front of them and offered them nothing. And they didn't come back the night after that. So <laughs> that is a true story. So, you, you as well and your family are not the a-holes. Correct. That's right. Correct. Okay. Any, any disagreements? I, I wouldn't, it's always me. I'm so sorry. I wouldn't go. Yeah. The Since if you want to go, enjoy. Yeah, I'm not going. Yeah, I would agree with you. I wouldn't go either. I think it's on the husband, though. Actually, I think the husband is the biggest, biggest jerk well, of, of the whole certainly, crowd. It, I'll say this, John Arthur. Th there, there is a degree of that that I do agree with, but you can clearly see that this is an issue between the two sisters. Mm -hmm. Well, no, and no, it no. comes from a deeply rooted not, nope, past. Nope, 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 nope. You, you, you misunderstood. Sister-in-law. Oh! Oh, I didn't know. Oh, sorry. That's, why, that's sorry. why her husband and her should be having a... I totally but, agree with but you. But Charlie's right. Hey, uh, when you pay me for the last restaurant, we'll talk about the next one, but... Yeah. Ain't happening. Sister... No, you're, you're right. If I agree with you. sister-in-law, then... Yeah. Husband... I thought it was sisters. Husband I, I is the problem. Was, darling. Yep. All right. Daniel. Oh, man. Th this one is... Uh, Read it's kind of long. Read fast. So I will try to read fast. Uh, am I the... Beep. Cool. For walking out of the airport when I saw my husband's mom standing here with her luggage. I, female 30, don't have the best relationship with my husband's mom. Since day one, she tried to make remarks and compare me to her. She then tried to get on my good side and started overly praising everything I do. And sometimes even copying me. Like that one time when she literally dyed her hair purple, just like mine. And when everyone pointed out how ridiculous she looked, she actually blamed me and accused me of trying to make a joke out of her. So anyways, my husband and I took two weeks off work to go visit some places out of the country. Tourism, in other words. Uh, thing is, I was the one who saved up and arranged for the trip. My husband was responsible for booking the tickets. My husband's mom wanted to come along and threw temper tantrums oh. when I said no. Oh. She called, texted, sent people to talk to me into letting her come. Even threatened to call the police and make some complaint up to get us to stay if she can't come. My husband said we should just take her and I told him he was wrong to tell her about the trip in the first place. He gave me an ultimatum. He... Uh, and said he wouldn't go if she can't come and I told him I'd gladly call his bluff which made him take his words back and say fine I will tell her to stop it because we don't we won't take her things got quieter suspiciously quieter the day of the trip came and we got to the airport at 2 p.m. my husband was walking ahead of me and was looking left and right like he was looking for someone. I asked him, but he didn't respond. He led me to the waiting area, and first thing I saw was his mom standing there with her luggage. I froze in my spot. I felt a cold wave rushing, washing over me, and I was fuming inside. She and my husband were hugging. That's when I quietly turned around and started walking towards the exit. My husband followed me while shouting at me to stop. He tried to stop me, and I told, I told him off the harshest way possible. He tried to say I was overreacting and that his mom was there anyway and I should let it go and not mess the ship up for us. I told him he and his mom could still uh, yeah, he and his mom could still go and that I was going home. I went home and sobbed into my dog's fur for several minutes. Turned out he booked her a ticket. The husband 
book the mama ticket without me knowing an hour later he came home yelling and raging about how pathetic and spiteful i was to walk out and go home and ruin the trip last minute i told him he caused this to happen he said that i was being so hard on his mom it's ridiculous i refused to fight anymore but he kept on uh berating me then called my family to tell them that the trip was canceled and that it was because of me my family said that I shouldn't have ruined it for myself and should have sucked it up and done my best to enjoy. Did I really overreact? So, oh man, here, congratulations. You are all the a hole. Well, it's, it's, you didn't mention that the, the trip was to see her family. I thought it was like a personal trip for the two of them. No, it, it, the, every single person here is terrible. Any, any any dissent? Any any thoughts? I, I'm I'm for her. I'm I'm, I'm like I'm going to say I'm going to say this. If the gal's one of those that's coloring her hair purple, then uh, <laughs> she's already got some issues, and the guy probably shouldn't have married her in the first place. My man, you don't know what. Kind of No. Hair does he have? So, <laughs> you know, my goodness. So, so uh, I, you know, I don't have too much to say about it anymore. So That's I would be for her if she didn't feel the need to put it into the beginning that her mom, mother in law, dyed her hair purple just to spite her, and it did get under her skin. What this tells me is that all three of them are petty small children who fight over everything the first thing that came to my mind when you marry your spouse you too become one you leave father and mother daddy forgot to leave somebody oh he definitely did yeah yep he definitely did now he may not have wanted to leave mommy a couple of days into the honeymoon is what i suspect yeah. but uh, yep. <laughs> he wanted mommy. Uh Mr. Mr. Charlie. Okay. So, um AITA for calling the cops and causing him to be taken in for taking my car key and using it while I was sleeping. Here's the story. So, I've been seeing this guy, 30M, Kevin, for several months now. We'd visit each other weekly and last week. You've been doing what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> last week he spent the night with me next morning i woke up at 9 a.m and couldn't find him nor my car i searched for my car key that was at the bottom drawer in my son's room i usually hide it in there and no one knows about this secret place but i couldn't find it i freaked out and tried calling kevin but his phone was dead so i ended up calling the police after waiting for like 10 minutes shortly after i discovered that kevin was found with my car at the supermarket's parking lot he was taken in by authorities and the car was returned. He was fuming at me, saying I should not have called the cops because he took the car to go buy us breakfast. In my defense, I said he never asked for my permission. I never gave him the okay to drive it. He argued that he thought I wouldn't mind much less or, uh, escalate and call the cops after he's done a nice thing for me and my son. He said he never had issues with cops, but because of me now, they thought he was a thief. We haven't talked since then. His brother keeps berating me, saying I messed up and acted stupidly. Well, so I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that he is the crown wearing a hole of the earth. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Crown goes to him. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I would agree. Any any, any no. disagreements? No. The one Not thing I would say is that she too is the a hole. And here's why she has another man coming in and sleeping with her with her kid in the next room yeah i'm I, very very much small by comparison to this guy who is it was taking advantage of her obviously obviously he needs a ride obviously he's using her obvious in every way possible but also she has a kid uh she invited it she invited it and she has a kid i'm just saying that there, that there's, there's like a ninety ten thing here going on. Yeah, well, just to uh, to tone it down a bit, uh, valuable life lesson I've learned: never drive your girlfriend's car. 
<laughs> yeah, she's in duly noted. She's in studio and she's still waiting for you to well anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'd say she's probably getting smashed by somebody else is my bet. Well, all of the all the above. So with that said, she is yeah. absolutely also the problem here. Mr. Steve. So okay. Final well, one. Um I'm she. I'm gonna clarify. Am, I don't know well, hey, what this word is here. Sham, S A H M, whatever you say that. Single, whatever that sing, is supposed to be. Single at the moment. Oh, single. I, okay. I guess I that's that new stuff. Uh, single at the moment with two two kids. Their dad, or eight and ten, their dad is the sole income earner in the house. He's responsible for bills and groceries. And recently, He's been tightening the grip on expenses and would get mad over little things that I do, like do laundry twice a week because kids or use more cleaning products than I usually do. Yesterday, I was making breakfast for him and the kids and used four eggs like scrambled eggs to make scrambled eggs. Wait a minute. She's singled at the moment and... Wait, 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 wait. wait. Hold on. Uh, a woman who is engaged in full-time care of her children or ch- and doesn't go out of the work. So that's a single, okay. single, single at, at home, home mom. mom, single at home mom. Excuse okay. Then we you. got it now. He came to the table and found out that I had used four and started lashing out at me, calling me irresponsible for not using two eggs. Instead, I called him unreasonable because of two eggs. Then it was the four of us, or or should I say when it was four of us, the kids wouldn't get enough. He yelled saying that I should keep in mind that he's the one who's expected to pay for all of that and will have to worry if we run out of groceries. I got upset and lost my appetite. I told him he could have the whole thing, but he called me childish and immature for skulking when he was just being honest and straightforward with me. I ended up having just coffee for breakfast, and he left for work without speaking to me. Am I the blank hole for using four eggs instead of two for the whole family so the whole family could eat? Okay, okay, so I stand corrected. It's stay-at-home mom. Stay-at-home mom. Right. So I I, I misread that. So stay-at-home mom. And I, I, she married to him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it is stay at the home mom and it is, it looks like it might be there. Either she married in or maybe she had these kids can't tell. It's hard to tell, but he's the sole breadwinner. Well, no, I, I, eggs he's, are pretty cheap. If you that bad on a budget, go sign up for food. Well, well, well I, I don't think it's saying. just that. Uh, I agree. It, 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 it's the even controlling more. thing. Yeah. It's a control issue. Well, I tell you what, I think I, Charlie the, had an Aunt a, Judy, and she had us. You can either eat this or you can wear this, but I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, though, this is a failure of two people to work together and see the issue for what it is. It's control. It is control. Yeah. It is. It, well, I don't, I'm not sure I'm ready to go there. It, it looks like it is. I am. Well, you, you can be all you want, but I'm the one talking at the moment. So <laughs> this is. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the thing is here is that when you. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> with me. Are you going to make four eggs? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just two of them. So shouldn't it just shouldn't be, be one an egg? Issue, right? He gets three eggs just for him. Fine. You get three eggs, too, when you go. It's true. Focus. Yeah, the focus is right. Focus. These two people need to work together. And if they need to get a quote-unquote second job, whoever that is, whether it's him, whether it's her getting an initial job, whatever, if it's an issue where we're really so hard up that we're having a hard time affording eggs, we got more serious problems at play than... Look here. Here's the thing. You got an eight... And a 10 year old. Now, do you think two eggs are going to feed four people, two adults, and an eight and a 10 year old? No, they're not. Somebody give me four eggs won't even feed. Come on. 
Right. Give me no. a break. It's <laughs> correct. But it, it is un- you're spot is on right. It comes right. down to this. It comes down to this. You're not wrong that there's a team playing issue, but let's even say that she was being. Let's let's pretend for a moment that she's being spiteful. Let's pretend that she did this with malice. Let's let's go to his side of the equation. Let's say that she was being spiteful and she cooked four eggs for the four people in that house. If his response is, we can't afford it, that's an issue. He, the reason he's yelling and not saying, honey, we need to watch a budget, we need a ration. If he's not saying that, but he's yelling at her, he's insecure and he is controlling. Let me just add this too. Was there other things to eat and we had to conserve the eggs until I can go shopping? That could be a, a situation. When my kids were growing up, they didn't have free reign to just to get in the refrigerator and get what they wanted because we lived on a budget. Right. Now they had snacks and they had things they could, you know, but my kids did not have free reign just to eat when they wanted to eat. And the food was set aside for certain things. So if there were other things that could have been eaten for breakfast and he asked her to conserve the eggs and she's not giving you the whole story. Yeah. Then there's an issue there. But, but like I said, even at that extreme, even at that extreme, it should have been a honey. We, we had this discussion. It shouldn't be a man yelling at the table with two prepubescent kids who were learning about how to treat a woman by their father acting up. If, right. yeah. if they are having an expense issue, then it needs to be talked about. He needs to breach that subject with her and let her know what in the heck is going on so that mm-hmm. she understands and he needs to understand also that these are growing children and they are eight and ten years old. They need the protein. And they're gonna eat some food and this isn't you know, I mean, this is not UNICEF here. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So With that said, thank you for joining me on our first adventure into the Am I the A Hole? The meme world. On Reddit. So, had, so you had not heard about this phenomenon where people post their public dirty, their dirty laundry publicly. You know, I don't do, I don't do much social media. So, is, I just, it's, is this like in the, prior thing in the early 1800s on yeah. what the uh founders were talking about in regards to the supreme court but instead <laughs> but instead but instead of someone else revealing it we're so stupid we reveal it to everyone else <laughs> exactly we, we put all of our dirty laundry on tiktok and on reddit and and you know yeah. what john Arthur, oh, that, that right there speaks to to me it speaks to the level of immaturity that we have in our world we're watching our culture fall further further every every day day. and can i (laughs) my goodness my goodness oh excuse me nice good job can i just say real quick um even for those of us that we deemed were not the a-hole the fact that you posted it makes you the a-hole I, I'm 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 with you. I think there's a certain a value in that. Uh, so, with that said, we do want to end this New Year's Day special. There will not be a Wednesday show. It's just this is the New Year special. We want to end this on a constructive note. We wanted to have a little bit of fun. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. It was a little silly, it was all over the place, but uh, we want to try something just kind of fun for the holiday and uh, for the new year. What is one way going around the room that you think that a christian should live intentionally or one way that you might live differently to be intentional about being culturally impactful in 2024 as a christian well i always believe that you should be very confident in your walk with the lord if you're confident of who you are in christ it'll be easy easy for you to make the right decisions and have the right actions amen so what's an actual step to that well i I, that's going to go back to the word to understand what God thinks about you and that you understand the value that you hold before God, not with arrogance, hold that value humbly. Don't become arrogant and prideful. Amen. Daniel. 
Uh, well, I guess with me, uh, I wish uh, Josh Gilbert was here, but I'm going to take a play out of his book for this Bobby next Boo. year. And <laughs> <laughs> He's with us in spirit. Keep going. Anyway, <laughs> I, I'm going to take a play out of his book and start uh, bringing my Bible to school and reading it during lunch. Not like just because I really don't do anything during lunch. I might as well make it productive. Dude, I read, not always, sometimes I'm just tired, and I, I, I'll admit to that, and I, I, I try to do this, but I try to read the Bible or read a commentary or a book, like the Experiencing God study uh, that, uh, that we were doing not too long ago uh, at, our, at our church that some of us go to here. Um, that got questions on the plane, and I got to share the gospel or encourage people in the gospel. It's absolutely a real thing when you're living not not flagrantly but openly. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. it makes a difference. That's a good thing, Mr. Charlie. Um, I want the goal this year would be to impact people and remembering one person at a time. You don't have to do a big crowd. Sometimes it's just a word. Sometimes it's an action. Just the walk impact people so the cause of christ do you mind elaborating on that a little bit yeah so one of the things that i've tried to lead over this uh, last few years is um college age young people to be able to defend their faith in the college classroom it takes a lot of work because you're you're trying to disciple people help them to understand bible and and how that comports with the world in which we live i'd like to lower that though that's college age i would like to start trying to hit the junior high and high school and i'm not sure exactly how to do that i've got some ideas but i want to start doing that especially with my grandkids because i've got grandkids that are fixing to head into junior high you've got grandkids 11 12 on the way and it's time to start impacting them. Yep. And our oldest one will be 14 next week. What? 13. 14. <clears throat> She's 13 Ooh. now. She'll be 14 next See, that, week. See, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I had one turn, had uh, my oldest granddaughter turn 12 yesterday. Amen. How about you, Mr. Steve? Well, you know, um, I've been thinking, and, and, you know, I don't read and as much in the bible as i should and spend as, no, as much time as i should in it and i really do need to do that a whole lot more um and i really enjoyed the experiencing god study that we did i didn't get to um get through the whole study um but i did read it all and i really enjoyed the study a lot um it was a a really good, a good study stuff. it was a lot of good stuff in there charlie and also i really want to make more of an impact on the men in the church mm. Um, mm. i help uh with a uh, men's ministry in the church and i think it's just getting to be more and more important to make more of an impact on the men in this church and try to get as many men involved into it and uh some of the younger men in the church instead of just a bunch of the the elderly men like myself and some of the older men and some that are just you know a little younger than me involved in it and i think it's um important to get some of these younger men and I realize that, you know, they're involved with a lot of things with their family and their children and everything. But um, if we could just get some more of the younger ones a little bit more involved in it. And just real quick, but, I want to say, yeah. uh, I think you guys are getting ready to do a Bible study uh, done by uh, Mark Batterson. Yes. On and 11, let me tell you, January 11th. I, I love him. I, I love the way he challenges people in the Christian faith. Uh, for those of you that are listening, um, Chasing the Lion, phenomenal yes. study. Phenomenal I think it's study. It's going to be an eight week study. I, I, I commend you guys for doing that. Yeah. Yep. 
It's a good, it's a good study, by the way. Uh, it's a study on, I'm, I'm familiar with that study too. It's uh, focusing in on Benaniah. Yes. Uh, actually a very, very little known man of David who went into a lion's den and slayed a lion. It's a great, it's a great study. So with that said, for me, I have for the last couple of years really focused on pouring into other people. And I will, I need to continue to be intentional about that. There are things that I'm slipping on that about trying to be open and available to those around me who are in need, but there's something else that I need to do personally in my own life to be more intentional. I need a better structure in my life. And there's a reason for that. I need to carve out more time for the Lord. I spend 30 minutes in the morning and that's about 15 to 30 minutes. And that doesn't always get done. I really need to carve out a time in the evening and perhaps a slightly different time in the morning so that I'm more awake. That's something that happens, you know, when you end up running 14 hours a day, sometimes the time with the Lord suffers, you're either very tired or you're waking up and you're very groggy. And so that's something I'm, I have to figure that out. I've got to be more intentional about my time with the Lord because the time has not been great because of physical needs. So anyway, structuring your time, discipling, uh, making sure that you are open to be used by God, making sure that you're walking in, in humility and strength. Guys, whatever it is this year that you are going to do, make sure that you do it intentionally and you do it to God's glory. Uh, happy New Year to you. And we will not be here this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, we'll be coming out with another. And in January, expect from us a, probably not that next Wednesday, but the one after we're going to start a set of studies on the, uh, on the church and how the Christian and the church should be engaging and how the church has kind of lost her cultural authority and why that's happened. We're looking forward to talking to you about it. But uh, with that said, we love you all so much. You have a happy new year. Happy new year. Bye. Happy new year. Good one. All right. All right. If you're still here, oh. favorite firework, favorite firework, and you are free to say, I don't like fireworks, but there's a lot of different types of fireworks. There are mortars. There are Roman candles. There are firecrackers, the, uh, the strings of firecrackers, the finales, the ones you light and they just go off by themselves for 20 minutes. What is your favorite what is your favorite firework? Miss Nikki, you're free to say I'm a woman. I don't like things that go boom. Oh no, I love I love the but I have no idea what's what. I just like <laughs> hey, that's nice. I'm glad it's free. I I'm get to watch this. The <laughs> I'm just telling you, huh? I could care less. What however it happens, just <laughs> Gosh. Daniel. I'm going home with her. <laughs> for you, um, Charlie. Thank you. I like the big ones, the mortars. Well, it really just depends. I, so I like. I like th 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 there, there are a few things. There are a few things. I like ones that go boom. <laughs> and I, I think like they all go boom, dude. <laughs> I'm so I wrote Roman candles. Roman candles are really fun. If you've never had a Roman candle fire, I'm not saying that I endorse this. All I'm saying is it's a good time. Caesar yeah, had his own I Roman candle. Can, can I give you an answer? I'm surrounded by firework <laughs> illiterates. <laughs> yes. It's a tie between finales and mortars. How about that? It's a good one. I like I like mortars because <laughs> I, I could have gone first. I'm sorry, Steve. Go ahead. Okay. You have the mic. Mortars mortars are really cool because they you know shoot up and all that and and they're pretty because you know kids like them they look cool and all that. But I would say probably my most favorite are bottle rockets. Ooh, because. Growing up, we had bottle rocket wars, and my gosh, they were that was so much fun. That was, I I would say that was probably better than slingshot wars. Mm. Now mm. BB gun wars, no so. BB gun wars, but but I would say, you know, safety gear. So at least wear <laughs> stuff <laughs> over your right? eyes. Yes, yes, I was thinking that. You know. So, Steve, you were a much safer kid than I because we had mortar shell wars. 
<laughs> Did you? Oh my goodness. Oh wow, cool. And we would also tamper with the fuses. So we would take we would take the long fuse that was a short there's a long run fuse and uh -huh. we would replace it with half second per foot. Oh cannon, my cannon, oh, cannon oh fuse. My. Oh yeah. We made Nice. And so and so we, we would run between them. We would set up like six or twelve of them, and we would light them as we were running through. And before we're out of the mortar field, they were going off. But because we had replaced the original line with cannon fuse, sometimes the charges would be damaged, so they would get halfway out the pipe and go at six feet or four <laughs> feet off the deck. Yeah, and so there my was this goodness. minefield of explosions. So, ladies goodness. and gentlemen, off, we're very thankful that John camera, Arthur is even with us today. Off camera, <laughs> I'll have to tell you. Say what? Stuff that <laughs> we're we're just camera. thankful that you're here. <laughs> yeah, huh? I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. Tell us what your favorite uh, firework or firework story is down in the comments down below. Have a safe. New Year, although you're probably watching this after you burn down your house. God bless you. <laughs> Happy New Bye. Year. Bye. Happy New Bye. Year. Bye.